Okay, let's talk about the CLEP exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the College Algebra CLEP exam. And I've done uh, a few videos on this. I'm going to be making more because the CLEP exam, uh, just the whole program, is an outstanding program. Um, so if you're watching this video, I assume that you're going to be uh, taking the CLEP College Algebra exam and maybe other CLEP exams as well. So as you well know, if you pass uh, these CLEP exams, you get you get college credit for this particular level. So, you know, this is great because it's going to save you time and money. And if you, you know, know a subject, I'm speaking beyond just college algebra, any subject, if you know it pretty well and you've already, you know, learned it and you already put the effort into learning it, it's just a smart thing to do to study and to test out of a particular course level. So, um, you know, college is, is uh, you know, not cheap, as you probably well know. And if you can save time, you know, without spending a semester or a year in a particular level that you don't need to be in, and uh, beyond that, you know, save thousands of dollars, then it's worth studying. So before we get going, if you're uh, new to my channel, I'm a math teacher, teach middle school, high school, college, love teaching. I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel and post all the time, but I also have a specific CLEP College Algebra exam uh, prep course. You can I'll leave the link in the description of this video. So if you're interested in checking that out, it'll really help you out. Um, you can take take a look at that after this particular problem. So this problem, and let me go ahead and show it to you now, is is the following. Okay, so I'd like you to solve this, and I left a little something on the screen here that you may or may not use okay so I'm not going to give you more than <laughs> this right now because I'm speaking I don't want to give you too many hints right here's an equation I like you to solve this equation and this thing on the screen may help you out so if you think you know what to do then maybe you know pause the video and give it a try now just uh, let me just say this much this is definitely this particular kind of problem is something that you absolutely should be able to solve at this college algebra level. So take a moment, maybe um, go in and solve a pause the video. Now for those of you, um, if you're back from solving the problem, okay, I'm going to solve it now, but for those of you who don't know what this is, this is a quadratic equation, all right? Quadratic equation. It's a very huge topic in mathematics, but let me just spend a quick, quick moment reviewing um, what a quadratic equation is, all right? So first of all, a quadratic equation is a type of polynomial equation, all right? A, t a quadratic equation is a type of polynomial equation, and specifically, it is a degree two polynomial, uh, polynomial equation, meaning that the highest power of the equation is 2. Okay. Now, this is very, very important because in mathematics, if something is a polynomial, not everything is a polynomial. There's all different types of things. There's radical equations, rational equations, logarithmic equations, systems, etc. I can go on and on and on. However, if we do spot a polynomial, okay, we love these things in math because we know a lot about them. So if we have a polynomial equation and we have a degree two polynomial equation, then we have a quadratic equation. So to solve quadratic equations, we there's different uh, basic strategies to take. Sometimes we can factor, okay, which is a great approach if you can do it. You, sometimes you can't do it. However, um, there are other techniques. Sometimes you can take the square root of both sides. Then there's something called completing the square. Now, I don't know if you've learned this or not, but uh, completing the square is actually like the long way of doing this. And this is the quadratic formula. Okay, absolutely critical. So completing the square is really not a practical um, approach to doing or solving quadratic uh, equations. Now, your teacher is going to want you to know how to do that if you're in a particular class. You need to learn it. It's good, what not, but the shortcut uh, method of completing the square is the quadratic formula. Okay, this you absolutely need to know. Absolutely. Now, why do you absolutely need to know this? Well, if oftentimes you cannot factor 
a quadratic e uh, equation to solve it. Oftentimes we can't take the square root of both sides to solve it. If we can do these methods, that's the preferred method. So that leaves us with this method here, the quadratic formula. This works 100% of the time. Okay. However, you shouldn't use it unless you can take advantage of these other uh, methods because they're more direct and easier. Now, I'm kind of you know going off on a tangent here, teaching you a little bit more about this because you know I want you to get something uh, out of this video. Uh, so now. I'm, again, I'm going to get to solving this, but let's just finish off something else here about polynomial. So this is a degree two polynomial, but there's something else you need to know about polynomial equations. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. And that states that when you have a polynomial, okay, when you have a polynomial equation, the number of solutions you have is equal to the degree of that polynomial. So what does that mean? So if you have a degree two polynomial like we do here, there are always, always two solutions. If I had a degree three polynomial, something like, just make something up here. This is a degree three polynomial. That means this has three solutions. Now the type of solutions a, a polynomial can have could be in a set of real numbers or complex numbers. So I'm really kind of expanding into a lot of areas beyond this particular problem, but I want you to put this uh, problem in context of the uh, the wider topic of polynomials, okay? Not just, you just don't have tunnel vision, just like, oh, quadratic equations. A lot of students, they kind of like, they focus on quadratic equations, but they don't know how it relates to the bigger uh, picture topic of polynomials. Okay, so with that being said, hopefully um, I uh, enlightened you, if you will. And now let's pr get into the practical things of uh, details of solving this equation using this thing. Okay, so I'm going to solve it, and I'll be talking um, along the way. So the first thing here is I need to put this in standard form. So that is 2x squared minus 5x minus 1 equals 0. Standard form is just ordering a polynomial such as it's, it's from the highest to lowest degree. So I have the square, the x, and the number. Okay, And we set it equal to 0. So that's standard form. Now the coefficient in front of the x squared term is a. The coefficient in front of the x term is b. And then the number is c. Now I'm going a little, I'm going to start picking up the pace here, and if you're totally lost, then you absolutely, you know, you got some serious review ahead of you. But if you're with me so far on this, then outstanding. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug in all this A, B, and C values into this formula, the quadratic formula. So X is going to be equal to negative B, so that's negative of a negative 5. A lot of students make a mistake, they go like, oh, it already has a negative there, I'll just put negative 5. That's incorrect. So the plus or minus square root b squared, so that's going to be negative 5 squared. Always put things in parentheses, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2a, which is going to be 2. So once you've done this, always double check your work before you start plugging things in. So let me see here, negative 5, minus and minus b, that's negative 5, b squared, boom, I'm just checking here, minus 4a, c is good, uh, 2a, okay, good, I like the, I like everything, I plugged in everything correctly, now let's scoot this guy over here and start simplifying it, okay, so if you got to this point, then that's, that's pretty good, okay, so now let's just go, we'll start working on the numerator, so x is uh, equal to minus and minus 5, so that's going to be x is equal to a positive 5, okay, that's the opposite of negative 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared is 25. Now, this is where students always make mistakes, okay? Now, how would I know this? Well, it's because I've been teaching for several, several years, and I've graded thousands and thousands and thousands of papers, and you see trends, okay? So right here, minus 4 uh, times 2 times negative 1. Do yourself a favor. This is a good way of uh, avoiding mistakes. This difference sign, turn this into a plus negative. So now you have a negative times a positive times a negative. 
What's this all going to be? This is all going to be a positive number. So this is going to be positive 8. Okay, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 times a negative 1 is positive 8. Okay, all over, now let's just go ahead and take care of this denominator. That's going to be 4. All right, so let me scoot this over so we can keep everything on one page. Now let's go ahead and keep tightening up the numerator. So x is going to be equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 8. Last I checked, that's 33. Okay, draw it a little bit nicer. Now, and that's going to be all over 4. So at this point, what you want to do is to see if you can simplify this radical here. Right? In other words, if that was the square root of 20, we would want to write that as the square root of 4 times 5 or 2 square root of 5. Again, if you don't know what I'm doing here, you know, you need to do some uh, review. That's okay. And now, like, listen, if that's the whole purpose of this video and a purpose of my course, maybe you're good in math, maybe you've learned this, but you need to review. It's worth to re you know reviewing and or brushing up on this so you can get the college credit, right? So, anyways, um, this is a something that you need to do if you can do this, right? So the square root of 33 is what? That is 3 times 11. There's no perfect square in here, so we're just going to leave it like this. And pretty much we are done. Okay, this is our answer. What you never do is turn this into a decimal. Okay, unless you're asked to, unless your answer options are in decimal form. So what does this plus or minus mean? So remember, I told you there's two solutions. So let's write it this way. The first solution is going to be 5 plus the square root of 33 over 4. That's one value, one number. And the second solution is going to be 5 minus the square root of 33 over 4. So these are our two solutions guaranteed to us by the fundamental theorem of algebra. Why? Because this guy is a polynomial degree 2, which we call a quadratic. Okay, so again, start, you know, start tying these things in. Uh, and you probably, you don't learn this until, you know, this right here I'm covering is kind of like an algebra 1 you know, freshman high school level algebra type thing, but college algebra is beyond that. Then that's where you start learning more about, uh, you know, more advanced polynomial equations. So we got to tie it all in, and hopefully this was a good little review for you. So let's go and wrap it up. Um, again, if you're going for your uh, the CLEP college algebra exam and you want a fantastic course, I think mine is, you know, second to none. Put a lot of effort, literally years and years of work into all my courses. And uh, I go f above and beyond what I do on YouTube. So I literally solve thousands of problems and my, my courses demonstrate a lot. It's a, it's a tremendous amount, but if you really want to learn this stuff, I think, um, you know, you want to get with a real comprehensive program. So I'll leave a, a link again in the description of the video if you want to check that out. Also, I'm literally posting on YouTube all the time. Uh, my passion is to teach and share what I know um, with the world. So I hope you will become a subscriber. And I already have hundreds of videos the time of this particular video that can help you out. Um, hey, if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and leave us some feedback. Let me know how uh, you know the CLEP exam is going for you. Does your does your um, you know college you know really you know encourage it? Or did you just kind of stumble upon it? Do you have more questions about it? So anything that, you know, your comments help me figure out how I'm doing and also gives me ideas for future videos. But with that being said, I really want to encourage you to study for these CLEP exams, okay? Um, it's definitely worth it. So if you're, even if you're not, you know, if you, you know, you think to yourself that, oh man, I wasn't that good in math. Listen, I'm telling you right now, even if you think that you're not good, everybody I've seen you can you can significantly increase your math skills. It just takes a teacher that you know you you like and understand and has a comprehensive program. Hopefully, I can be that person for you. But nevertheless, I wish you all the best in your future um, education. And uh, thanks for watching. And have a great day.